now i am going to describe about a very unique topic that is about the actinomycetes now by the name it appears like actinomycetes is a uh, fungi but it is not like so actinomycetes refers to a group of filamentous gram positive bacteria okay so it includes a number of bacteria which are filamentous and which are gram positive also the example of the actinomycetes are the actinomyces the nocardia actinomadura and streptomyces now please remember the difference that the actinomycetes actinomycetes has a te in it but the actinomyces do not have a t okay so this is the difference between the actinomycetes and the actinomyces actinomyces comes under or it is the example of the actinomycetes group of bacteria actinomycetes is a whole group of the filamentous bacteria while actinomycetes actinomyces is a filamentous bacteria itself okay so this is a very fine difference that you should remember between the actinomycetes and the actinomyces now among all these four we have to talk about these two types of filamentous bacteria that is the actinomyces and the nocardia and we will cover all uh, these two in two separate videos so first of all talking about the actinomycosis which is caused by the actinomyces which is caused by the actinomyces now what is the species name for that actinomycosis the name of the species for the actinomycosis is the actinomyces israeli okay it is the actinomyces israeli and what is the pathogenesis of this infection caused by the actinomyces israeli so the infection i mean the pathogenesis is that these actinomyces are uh, very commonly found in the mouth they are oral commensals they are oral commensals very commonly found in the mouth and whenever there is any trauma within the mouth like some uh, like you go to a dentist and the dentist extract the tooth so there is open bleeding in the mouth so that may be a that may be a trauma other than that if we uh, you are when we are brushing very uh, quickly or very fastly to uh, attend to the early morning lectures in your college then during that uh, very rapid brushing of your teeth there may be uh, uh, any uh, injury to the gum and may lead to bleeding or may lead to open bleeding in your mouth so these are the some of some types of trauma that may occur in the mouth and that predisposes to the infection with the oral commensals that is the uh, actinomyces israeli so the infection caused by the actinomyces israeli through that trauma in the mouth uh, is a type of chronic granulomatous infection okay it is a type of chronic granulomatous infection and it is characterized by painless wood like hard benign swelling so there will be a swelling around the mouth around the jaw and that swelling will be benign swelling that will not be a malignant that will appear as if it is malignant because it will be very hard on touching but it is not it is not malignant it is a benign swelling and it will be painless swelling it, and it will be very hard swelling so if it is it is wood like since it is hard so it is wood like so there will be painless and wood like hard swelling around the mouth or around the jaw okay and there will be sinus formation so there will be sinus formation over that swelling and plus there will be discharge coming through that uh, swelling okay that discharge will contain certain amount of granules also so these are the three typical and the characteristic features for the actinomycosis actinomycosis that is caused by the actinomyces israeli now the clinical manifestations if we talk about the clinical manifestations then the it, actinomyces actinomycosis can present to us in different ways the most common way is the cervical facial actinomycosis about which i was describing that there will be lumpy jaw there will be a swelling around the jaw that will be hard to feel and it will be painless plus there will be a discharging sinus over that swelling and through that sinus there will be a variable amount of discharge containing granules coming out so that will be the characteristic finding that we get in case of cervical facial actinomycosis and similar is the case if there is bone infection caused by that actinomyces israeli then also we will see that swelling and those granules coming out through that uh, through a particular sinus that has been formed over that swelling so 
the presentation will be same but the clinical uh, I mean manifestations will be different okay so manifestation means uh, the involvement of the organs and based on that involvement uh, the signs and symptoms okay so if bone is involved then then also there will be swelling and discharge of the granules etc but in that case the uh, those findings will be particular to that site where the infection has occurred okay plus there will be soft tissue in there can be soft tissue infection also with that uh, actinomyces israeli and also there will be cavitary lesions may be formed in the lungs it can also cause pleural effusion but one thing you should not forget is the cervico facial actinomycosis because this is the most important and the most common mode of presentation of this infection so this is very important to remember now coming to the lab diagnosis how are we going to diagnose the case of the actinomycosis so for diagnosis of any case first of all we have to collect the specimen and here also we will have to collect the specimen what will be the specimen for us the specimen will be the discharge which is coming out through that sinus over that swelling so that is the most important specimen that we want to have for the diagnosis of the organism also we can get the bronchial was the sputum in the respiratory complex if the respiratory cavitary lesions has been has occurred uh, in the lungs by that organism then we can get the sputum also for the diagnosis purposes other than that we can use the bronchial was as well okay and with that we can go for the diagnosis in the laboratory and then comes the after collection of all those specimen then we will do the direct detection we'll try to detect it directly Uh, uh, and how do we do that so for that we have the discharge material that discharge material should be washed with the normal saline and the sedimented yellowish sulfur granules remember those granules which we are getting uh, discharged with pus uh, through that sinus those yellowish uh, sulfur granules they get sedimented when we wash this uh, discharge i mean when we the, when the collected discharge is washed with the normal saline then those granules since they are heavy so they settle down or they sediment and we collect those granules okay we collect those granules and we keep it we keep those granules in between we keep those granules in between two slides so suppose these are our two slides we keep those granules in between two slides and we crush those granules we keep these granules between those two slides and crush those granules okay and we will crush those granules after crushing after crushing we will prepare the smear okay after crushing we will prepare the smear and we will do the gram staining so on gram staining we will find a particular type of pattern that is the gram positive filamentous bacilli will be seen there okay gram positive filamentous bacilli will be seen on the slide under the microscope so that will be Uh, that will be giving us a clue that it is a type of filamentous bacilli now we have uh, now we by that we uh, converse us converse ourselves towards the filamentous bacilli and uh, after conversing towards the filamentous bacilli we can do some culture and some special identification test and we will pinpoint that what type of filamentous bacteria is causing the infection okay so then we will do the culture culture so uh, culture will be done anaerobically because the uh, actinomyces is a anaerobic organism and that is done at the body temperature that is 37 degree centigrade we will wait for 48 hours and the culture media you should please remember this the that the culture media that we use for the growth of the actinomyces israeli is the thioglycolate broth is the thioglycolate broth and the brain heart infusion agar brain heart infusion agar that too anaerobically so on this thioglycolate broth you get the fluffy ball like growth at the bottom the fluffy ball like growth at the bottom while in case of brain heart infusion agar you get the spider colonies you get the spider colonies these are the two important findings of the actinomyces israeli and may be asked in the mcqs as well so please remember this that the actinomyces israeli on thioglycolate broth produces fluffy balls like growth and uh, brain, on, on the brain heart infusion agar it produces spidery colonies it produces the spidery colonies so this would be 
remember because it's important from mcq point of view next what we have to do is to confirm whether uh, a party i mean uh, what type of filamentous bacteria it is so for confirmation of the species we have got some modern techniques which we talk about in uh, almost our all videos in lab diagnosis that is the malditoff and the vitek and pcr based methods and the conventional biochemical tests are the older methods now nowadays we are not going for the conventional biochemical test methods rather we have got the modernized techniques for detection of the uh, particular species so we can do the pcr we can do the malditoff vitek they will tell us the uh, species name so that's all how we uh, diagnose a case of the actinomycosis this is all about the actinomyces that may be asked as a short note 